Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with my hot mess quilt. If you're not familiar with this series, there is a playlist link down below. You can go get caught up. This is going to be the final episode. This quilt started out as a scrappy strip quilt. It turned into a scrappy patchwork quilt. And now it's just a scrappy hot mess because I have a boo-boo that I discovered when it came out of the dryer. And of all the things that were going wrong with this, I didn't expect this. Do not like. <laughs> but it happens. And I left it so we can fix it together on camera because it is a common problem. And for someone like me who doesn't pin things and just sews like a wild ape, <laughs> it can for sure happen. But I'm usually more careful than this. I obviously did not catch enough fabric when I sewed my pieces together because we've got this going on. So incred sad. <laughs> so that's the boo-boo that we have. And there are different ways to fix that. I will talk about that in a minute. First, let's talk about the actual quilt. The other thing that has me... Uh, uh, the flannel, which was brand new, and this is the only thing that was washed, it pilled. It's like completely covered. I thought it was just threads and I went outside to shake it and I was like, those aren't coming off. So I don't know if you can see in the camera. See if we can focus. So you can see some, where are we? Just little fuzz balls stuck right on the fabric. Do hate. I can certainly brush some of those off and I will, but I just wanted to show you that we got those little fuzzies on there. This is what was caught in my tray in the washing machine. It has since dried. I want to go throw that outside for wildlife. Squirrels would love this in their nest. And this is what I had in the dryer. So not bad. Um, let's look at the raggedy edge. For this one, I still added fabric around the border so we could have extra thick raggedy edge. But I left it pretty long. I think I was cutting like an inch to an inch and a half in. I'm not sure I love the extra length, but it will rag more as it goes. But this is what we've got going on here. See, it is kind of long. If you make it long and you're not thrilled with it, you can just go around and trim and then it'll rag quicker after that. So you'll remember we did uh, two extra layers of flannel. No, one extra layer of flannel and one of muslin. Other than that, do like. Now the things that I was so concerned about where I had like puckers and things, where was the big pucker that I was like freaked out about? I think it was here, yes. You know, see, it doesn't really show at all. I mean, I can see that the fabric, you know, has been folded over in both places, but see, stuff like that, that's not a big deal at all and that doesn't bother me. So, other than that one mistake, this all looks pretty darned cute. Very cuddly. Um, polyester batting never, like, has quite as much drape as cotton, but it's very lightweight and it's easy to wash. As long as you sewed it good. <laughs> this is what the whole back looks like. And I will take pictures at the end. But right now, let's talk about this boo-boo. So let me put the camera down and I'll give you some options in case this happens to you. I can see that it wants to start happening right there too. I'm just really bummed. I totally am. I don't recall going that close to the edge, so I don't know what is going on. It could be that this fabric is thin and just really wanted to unravel. I don't know. You know what I'm probably going to do? I will end up putting this on eBay for a dog blanket. I will probably, after I reinforce this one, this one, I will check them all. I might go up and down all the rows with some extra stitching just to hold everything in place. Whatever I do, I'll talk about it before it goes up for auction, and that won't be until after my trip. If you really wanted to do this in a way where it would not show at all, the best way is to just like turn both edges in as much as possible and do hand stitching. I have zero desire to do that. Another thing that you can do if you don't care at all 
is first to like really stabilize it more. You can put a piece of iron on facing with the sticky side up and you can position your fabrics and then you know make them match up as best as you can press it so there'll be that adhesive underneath holding it together and then you could do some hand stitching or if you don't care what it looks like and you just want to make it you know last again if it's for a dog and nobody cares you could just go do zigzag over that and that will really hold it into place I'm not going to do that because I don't want to just see some zigzag on the back so what I'm going to do is I will be pinching both ends as neatly as I can and I'm just going to go to the machine and you know pinch these like this and boy is that hard to do so I can see how much fun I'm going to have and I'm just going to you know like put it under the needle this way and I'm just going to sew oh you don't know how much I don't want to do any of this but it's just the way I feel like doing it I just don't want to do any hand stitching at all see I can see that this fabric wanted to fray more so I will have to reinforce this whole little quilt See how easy it would be for me to just do this and just sew. You know what? I'm going to do that. I don't care if there's going to be a thread on the back showing. I really don't. I think it's going to be the, the best way. I'm going to really fold that over good. And I'm just going to top stitch. There might be a little pucker here and there. But that's what we're doing. Let's go. I have myself positioned as to where this is going to go on top and folding it this way. It just feels more comfortable for me to pull the fabric this way and sew. So I'm just making sure that this gold fabric is, you know, folded over and I'm just going to lay it as far as I can on top of that other fabric. And I'm just going to straight stitch. I'm not going to do a zigzag. Go ahead a little bit and back. I have the right glasses on. I don't. And I'm going to uh, just try to make it with as least amount of pucker as possible. Really go over here. All right, that's about as good as I can do on that. So this is what it looks like here. You can see the stitch line. And on the back, if you can imagine all the pills being gone, <laughs> there's a line now going in this direction. Now I'm going to go secure the other one that looked like it was coming apart. And that one's right here. I'm going to just fold it over a little bit. Okay, I think I did a worse job on this one. <laughs> this just um, reassures me that I am not to make quilts as parts of tutorials. Because I don't enjoy the process, stuff tends to go wrong. Back you up a little bit. You know, I have to be passionate about something or it just ends up kind of sucking. What I think I would like to do, because now I would be worried, and if this does go to a dog, which is what I would like to see happen, it will need to be washed often. I think I am going to go up and down every single stitch line with zigzag. Huh? Doesn't that sound horrid? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't feel like doing all that work. And going in this direction, which is the direction I would need to go in, you know, the stitch lines don't match. I would be like, ugh, I would be all over the place. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'm going to wash it again a couple times and see if anything else comes apart. And if it doesn't, I'm good with it. And if I put it on eBay and somebody wins it for a buck for a dog, the dog will be happy. I'll be happy. And it'll at least find a good home. So I'm going to end this lovely tutorial. <laughs> that shows you how not to do things. I'm gonna end it now. We will do something else. I have some more ideas. This though really was worth me doing just to learn how to, you know, do the strip sets and then just cut them and turn them and 
make it look like you did a lot of patchwork when you didn't. So this part really was worth it. And I still love the raggedy edge, even though I'm not as thrilled with it being this long. I think I like it shorter a little bit. I like it like shorter and really puffy as opposed to long and droopy. <laughs> so that's it for now. I will take a few pictures. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye. Don't go yet. I've decided to quilt the whole friggin' thing because I might as well just punish myself right up until the end. <laughs> you know what? I don't think it's going to be that bad. I am going to go just up and down, <laughs> I will show you, about an inch apart, and I don't have to worry about going in the other direction, I don't think. Can you see if I show you here? Ooh, whole different angle to consider. You can see I had sewed around the edge and then about an inch in. I'm just going another inch in and I'm just going to go down, turn, go up, back and forth for the whole little quilt. And I bet you it won't take me too long. Telephone. Except that I just ran out of thread. You know, I thought sure that I had a walking foot, but apparently I don't. I have like a quilting foot, but it's not the same. So I'm going to actually get myself a walking foot. It would come in handy right now. I mean, I know a walking foot would always come in handy, but I just, you know, you know me. All right, I'm just going to go ahead off camera and go up and down this thing, and then I will report back when I'm done. And I've decided to do something a little different. I came down and instead of turning and going back up and down and up and down, I'm just going to continue going around. So I'm stopping about an inch from where my other line is, and I'm going to go this way, and I'm just going to keep going around and around until I work myself into the center. I've never hated anything as much as I do right now. <laughs> This is one gigantic pucker, and I don't care. This might end up in the trash. <laughs> and if you know me at all, you know this would not end up in the trash. I would find somebody who would want it. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Now my thread came out. Oh, one of these days... I will be done this project, and I am never attempting batting again. I just don't like it. Well, I shouldn't say never. I'm sure when I feel like putting another train wreck video out there, batting is the way to accomplish that. There's no end. do hate so much. And I ran out of bobbin thread. The nightmare continues. Way the fuck over there. I'm getting there. I'm about to get out of hell. <laughs> this is terrible. Just terrible. This isn't even, like, in the center. Oh, it's the last turn. Oh my god. Yay! Yay! This is, this is, this is so... This is such a mess. Oh. And I don't know where my other glasses are. And I need to put some more lights on. I'm completely wiped out. I'm so tired of even just sitting at the sewing machine, threads breaking. This is such a terrible, terrible job. This will never see its day on eBay. I'm not putting this up there. It is a wrinkled disaster. And see, I, I hate quilted things. It's like stiffer now and ugh. It is, it is a wrinkled and puckered mess. But then I will say that, 
you know, the lines are pretty cool. It, you know, it's not too bad to see that. I think I like straight lines better than like all kinds of, you know, curvy quilted lines. And where the pattern is striped on the back with those little like weird shaped things that I don't know why I can't think of what to call them. It doesn't hardly show. You do see the lines. Starting to like the lines a little bit. I got threads to trim. So uh, the worst that would happen now is if this is washed and something wants to come apart, well, it's only going to come apart a little tiny bit because there's stitching, you know, all around everywhere and gigantic puckers. I mean, you could like hide coins in there. <laughs> So if somebody ever ends up with this, you know what I was thinking would be kind of funny? When I get back from my trip, that I would use this as a giveaway. Win one of Darlene's nightmare quilts. <laughs> then we can do that polyester one down the road too someday. But seriously, I would like a peanut gallery member with a dog. Promise me it goes to a dog. Or you could use it as a mat to wipe your feet when you come in the door. <laughs> <sighs> Let's think about that. Maybe I'll do a giveaway when I come back from my trip and this will be the awesome prize. Oh, I'm so tired of this project. I don't think I will be doing another quilt anytime soon like this. I'll stick to like maybe rag quilts with no batting and no quilting. Don't like that part. <laughs> if you could see this up close. It really is embarrassing, the fact that I'm even trying to show you guys how to do anything. Please remember, I'm not a quilter and I've never professed to be and I don't like quilts. I think you guys know that. I'm not fond of the looks of quilted shit. Do not like. But I do like very much the process that we went through and that's what this was all about. I hope you at least learn one thing in my videos. Just one. Even if it's just that it's okay to make a hot mess quilt and still love it. Because this is awfully cute even though it's a hot mess. And it will make a fine cuddly blanket for a dog or a child or whatever. I mean it's still absolutely usable. With that said, I am done. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming hot messes because there will be plenty more along the way. But it's all in good fun. I enjoy the videos no matter what. So do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. Bye.